Give it a little bit. A little taste of the goodness. A little bump. Ready? All right, guys, listen, hold on. Before you get into this video, I have a message for you from Heavy D from the future. And from the future, I mean, we just got done filming this video and I know what happens. So I'm coming to the beginning of the video to give you a little bit of a heads up. This was originally intended to be just like a one day deal, get up, you know, do the project and get home. It's still going. We're still working on this project, which means, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna get a whole multi-part video series called Big Iron coming from the top of Troll Mountain. What was gonna be just one video is now gonna be multiple videos. So once you watch this one, you're gonna see that we still have a lot of work to do to be able to continue this project. And I think you're gonna be very entertained, especially if you like heavy equipment, if you like beautiful scenery, if you like dangerous situations, which there have been plenty. And like I said, this is real time. This project is still happening as you're watching this video. So we're gonna to try to release these videos as close as we can back to back to keep you guys um, engaged and entertained and following along with the process because I still don't know how this is gonna end. So with that said, what do we do, Eric? I have no idea what we do. It's oh, oh, okay, we buckle up. We buckle up. Yeah. Buckle up and enjoy. Hello, friends. Today is Saturday and uh, I really didn't have much scheduled for today and that was intentional because I needed the day to get caught up on stuff at the hangar, stuff at home, just kind of random stuff that I've been getting behind on, but I got a call and now my day has changed and I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. Before I get into that though, look at this bad boy. Jeep Rubicon, since we're giving away my Raptor, it's going to its new home soon. This is now gonna be my new daily driver slash small trailer recovery vehicle, but it's not gonna be small, it's gonna be Eight, 900 horsepower, maybe more. We don't do a lot of full build coverage on the channel, but I know a lot of people are interested in something like this, so I'm gonna show you. So I just got a call from a guy who owns a big rock quarry up in uh, Northern Utah, kind of on the Idaho border. And he has some huge equipment that he wants to get rid of. It's old like mining equipment, big excavators and a dozer, I think. Now the reason why this is interesting to me and the reason why I answered this call and I'm gonna go check out the equipment is any excavator over 80,000 to 100,000 pounds is considered really big. Those are like oversized loads. Sometimes you have to break them into pieces just to transport them. All of these machines are well over that. They're like 150,000 pound machines. So they're monsters and they're old. So you guys know I love heavy equipment. I love old heavy equipment and I love massive heavy equipment. So he said, go check it out, see if you like it and uh, make me an offer. And I'm gonna film this by myself. So you're gonna get a little different POV. It's not gonna be the big sexy cinematic drone shots. It's gonna be a lot of this guy right here. It's gonna be a fun little journey. Let's go. All right, guys, I made it. It's a little bit windy up here. The audio might suck, so I apologize in advance for that. It is at 8,000 feet of elevation, which is uh, way higher than I expected. And as you can see, it's literally just kind of at the top of a mountain here. There's a dozer over there. I saw one of the excavators right there, and then I saw two more over there. So let's uh, go explore. So this is machine number one, and it's a monster. And this is the most rare machine up here. Very obscure, Cobelco K935. And I say rare and obscure is because there's not many of them out there. Like if you Google this, very little pops up except for some old operating manuals. From what I understand, I believe this is a twin engine machine. And that's awesome. <laughs> it's enormous. Yeah, that thing's a monster. I think it's like a 60 ton. I don't know if that's with the bucket and the counterweight. According to the owner, I believe the turntable on this machine is bad. They're not functioning or something's wrong with that. Look at this, I've never seen an excavator with giant hydraulic motors sitting outside like that. The top of the tracks goes damn near to my nipple. I've never used nipple as a measurement before, and I think I'm gonna start using that more because that uh, that's pretty handy. Hmm, that's weird. That's weird. It's definitely not gonna run. Are you sure about that? So engine one, engine two. God, I've never seen a twin engine excavator. It is a big, big girl. Has an old uh, Detroit diesel engine number two right there. 
no idea if the engines are good. Back in the old days, they were not too concerned about <laughs> comfort. It looks like there's an old maybe heater behind the seat there. I keep thinking to myself like, oh, maybe we'll be able to get it running. But I'm not convinced that uh, it's gonna function. The hydraulics look like they are. They've seen better days. Anyways, next stop is gonna be, right, I believe over that hill. Go check out the other two excavators, which according to the model numbers that I pulled up are even bigger than this one. Psych! Yeah, that's not as big as I was expecting. That's not nearly as big as the Cabelco. For some reason, I thought this was going to be bigger than the Cabelco. Looks like it's got a thumb. It's got a bucket buried somewhere in there. It's definitely a quarry machine because you can see it's just been patched and repaired and re-welded over and over again. As you can see, they're all really old machines. All old manual hydraulics. No electronics. There's one engine. And I only see one air filter, so probably just one engine on this machine. But it's got a rock for a turbo. Apparently the turbo went out and uh, they never put it back together. So then we're faced with the question of, is it worth tracking down the turbo and bringing it up and trying to put it on it to be able to get the machine to walk out of here? Or do we just try to pull it out in pieces? This thing might be worth more in scrap than it is running because uh, not a lot of people like to buy these old machines for very much money. But there is excavator number three. And there's their old, <laughs> their old John. Seen better days. This machine looks pretty haggard. Definitely uh, looks like the oldest of the bunch. Cat 245. This machine, from what I've read online, can be like 150,000 pounds. The closer I get to it, it definitely feels just as big, if not bigger, than the uh, Cabelco. It might not look like it in the video, but it's, it's a monster. Tracks aren't as wide, but they're definitely, they look beefier. The 235, which I just looked at, had a uh, Cat 3206. This, I don't know. And according to the messages that I got, this one has a bad engine or it's completely missing the engine. All right, found the engine. It's definitely complete, but uh, according to the messages, they say it's dead or blown up. So, oh yeah, I guess, <laughs> you wanna know how I know? It would be that giant hole in the block right there. And the fact that you can see the crankshaft so, yep, engine is definitely toast on this one. Be interesting to see which model engine this has because it still has a turbo on it. And that turbo could potentially work for the other machine. The 245 has a 3406 CAD engine in it. I don't think it's the same turbo as the other machine, but I'll go do some homework. So that machine definitely is gonna have to be pulled apart and uh, drug out of here. And I don't think it's gonna wanna go in one whole piece. Also, they have some really cool old trucks sitting up there. Let's see if we can zoom in here. Hold it, run that back. Wait a minute, go right. There, reset. Full screen. Okay, reset. Zoom in right here on this spot. Enhance section A6. I enhance the detail and... Well, hey there, buddy. I don't know if those are... Uh, Part of the deal if you're trying to get rid of them or what but they're pretty pretty beat up but they got really cool patina now i'm going to sneak over here to what appears to be their little camp this place is so remote so far in the middle of nowhere that uh i mean it's like a three hour drive from our shop about an hour flight so they have a full-blown man camp which is that cabin is completely toast. There's some cows. Hey, buddies. That was a bear for a second. What's up, bear? I don't think the guys are gonna let me do solo vlogs anymore because the editors are just gonna be doing this the whole time. I don't really know what is, but I'm not doing that. I think we should leave it up to the viewers 
um, if they want to keep seeing these solo vlogs with Dave. So comment down below. Do you want to keep seeing this or not? Whoa. Looks like Alan's been up here. Pepsi party. Yeah. This made a great haunted house. What have we got here? An outhouse. This place seems to be the most complete. Huh. Wouldn't it be? Oh, never mind. There's one more building. Standard bro bunkhouse. Much nah, it looks like the kitchen. Kind of like a two and a half bedroom. Um, currently no bath. But nice kitchen. Um, all right, so as I work my way back over to the dozer, which is the last piece of equipment I'm gonna look at, I wanna show you guys what we're up against, getting this machine down through here, up there, and then down into the valley, which down in the valley is much easier said than done. This is not, this is not, a, this is not flat by any means. This gives you a better idea of the terrain that we're working against. That little road down there is the access road and it comes straight up. Here is the last piece of equipment, the dozer. And uh, it's not a D8, it's a D7. The audio might suck, so I apologize in advance for that. It's an old model with an enclosed cab, which is uh, kind of rare as you can see there, big and goofy looking back in the day. It's got a ripper. It's got at least an engine that's not torn apart as far as I can tell yet. The freaking cab of this thing Looks like it's got enough room for four or five people. It's got batteries, which definitely probably don't work anymore. It's got typical old dozer hydraulic leaks. Since this has the giant, ridiculously huge enclosed cab on it, that means that it has not been exposed to the elements except for, you know, right there with the doors broken and some broken glass. But all of the levers and stuff move very freely. Like, listen how crisp the switches that's uh it's not something you usually see on these old dozers because they've usually been sitting on the elements forever so i do feel good about that again i don't know if this thing has jammed up tracks or what's going on with it it's obviously got no no power to try to start it right now but uh, i'm going to talk to the owner and see what he knows about this because if this one did run when they parked it it's one that we would definitely spend some time trying to get running all right, well, I'm done checking out the dozer. I gotta hike back up there, jump in the helicopter, and head home. Oh, yeah! Wizard power. Yeah! Well, my friends, we're back. We're back at the beautiful quarry. And we are now here today to see if we can get uh, some of these machines running. The plan is to start with the old dozer because that one supposedly should run no problem. Well, not no problem, but supposedly it's the most capable of running. Then I think we'll probably go over to the Cat 235, which is at the bottom of the pit over there because that one, we need to see if the turbo that we brought is gonna work for it. The Cabelco, the biggest one, the K935, um, I found out the engines do run and it should function, um, but the turntable is broken. So like I thought before, if we can get it running and driving, that'd be very helpful. I still think we're gonna have to dismantle the booms on a couple of these machines, the 245 for sure. Uh, you're gonna see us spend the next, probably this whole video, doing will it starts, trying to get all this stuff running. And uh, we're gonna camp here tonight. So we brought all of our camping gear because it's a three and a half hour drive from Salt Lake. So it doesn't make sense to get out there and then come back. And we got here late today anyway, since we spent all morning tracking down parts and pieces. So we're all kind of getting here and we're gonna start unloading and making a game plan. So here we go. Oh, Mountain Dew and cigarettes, baby. Yep, pretty much. Pretty much. Holy. Only way oh. to travel. How long was that? This two day project is a week.
Just so we're clear. Well, I'm not trying to be the negative guy. Well, it's good to know what version of hands showed up today, huh? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Not and it, and it wasn't. You could do so. You. It wasn't bad. It's just. Why did it take so long? It's dirt roads. Fifty percent of the way here. Really? Oh yeah. I didn't know that. Well, Shortly they, after that, he brought he brought in this way, and we came in this way, and it's way worse. We came through City, City of, of the Rocks that National Park. All right, first item of business is getting this old dozer started. This is going to be a key piece of equipment to help us move the other machines around that are dead. And uh, from what I've seen, it appears pretty complete. The owner said it did run when it was parked here. And then he started to ramble about some transmission filters. So that made me a little nervous, but we brought filters, brought oil. We brought everything to do a full tune up. And this is actually a cool little machine. It's pretty complete. This door looks a little rough, but don't, uh, don't judge it. Got a big battery. Here. Sparks, what size? You need 916s? 916s are 5.8s deep. Uh, <laughs> this is syrup. Yeah, it's syrup. No way. Mm. Yeah, we were just getting the air filter cleared out. We uh, checked the oil level. Put about a gallon and a half in it. Now we're gonna look for the hydraulic fluid. Reach out to the and uh, the transmission. Yeah. Had to clean it up. Oh, find it. I found it. I assume it's in the cab. At least, yeah. Give her another drink. Uh, just taking off the rut spots so that when it sucks up into the ram, it doesn't tear out the seal. You think it'll start? Uh, I think it'll start. As long as we got fuel to it, it'll probably start. So now, once everybody's clear, we're gonna try to crank it and see if it spins over freely. You ready? Owner says that this has not run in about, it shut down seven or eight years ago. Can you like pull that thing or push that thing anymore? There we go. Come on. There we go. See what she thinks. Oh, yeah, baby. Sounds oh, good. Baby. She sounds real good. And we put uh, clean er, the additive in it. No, not in the filter. Let's maybe. Um, right there, Alan. Right there. All right, let's just try spraying it real quick. What? The, the stuff right there on that the additive right there. Right here. Yep. Turn that Ready? Yeah. Hey, hey, make sure somebody gets a picture of the exhaust smoking oh, or a video. Oh, oh, oh. Sounded really good, cranking over, is trying to trying to fire. Um, did we get a fresh fuel filter on it? It didn't. No, fit. it was a different trap catch or something. So is the outer filter bad? It ain't got no gas in it. All right, ready? Yep. Filter in the way. <laughs>
touching it all, but then it started to pump it through the system and then it started to want to work. So uh, now we're hoping for the best. gonna test it by pushing some rocks real quick to see if it'll push them and then uh, we're gonna move on to the next one so I just got to zip tie this uh, hydraulic line up it's kind of dangling down in the danger zone Okay, so this machine, as you know, uh, is missing the turbo. So I went and bought a turbo from a guy on the internet today. It said Cat 3306, he had no other details. I went down to his place. It was, I mean, no. Nope. I knew it was too big. I think he thought it was for a 3406. Does not fit? No. Too big. Let me see. Mucho grande. <laughs> I can just hold it up next to it and let's put that oh, back. Holes are definitely not going back to the guy. I knew it wasn't the right size. I, it seemed large. Um, we can try getting this running without a turbo. It's just not going to run very well. But it's probably worth cranking over just to see if we can even get it started. So let's grab a couple batteries. Just like I could sit my I could set my ten up right here. Yeah, and the other one's even bigger. This is the smallest of the bunch. Fifty-fifty. I can try using this. Not really. I think it's probably not how big it is. Not far. Not far. She was thirsty. Yeah, turn the crank off. What'd you What'd you find? A hat with style. <laughs> That's all that's left. Gosh, <laughs> that's about chucking right out the bit of this. <laughs> the switch seems to be stuck. Another's pretty locked up, it sounds like. Not a good sign. Why? Why? No crank. Uh, that just means the motor is pretty much seized inside. Not a good sign. The best motor put five gallons of our hydraulic fluid. And so this is what I tried to. Of our fuel. Can't say it because I don't think these guys lighted it out. All right, let's just edit this out real quick. All right, you should be good to go, hands. Is there any? We could. Take some. a bunch of ATF down the exhaust. We put a loop through the exhaust. It'll go through whatever open ports there are, open valves, and that's going to be the problematic cylinders anyways. The valves that are open, yeah. So this engine, uh, the it's locked up. But we don't think it's locked up mechanically, like it's broken. We think that since the yeah, exhaust works. manifold was left open, um, <laughs> that water was able to get down inside there, and water gets in and sticks yeah, to the inside of the pistons and the cylinders, and basically they kind of rust in place. So getting those things uh, freed up should allow the engine to spin over and allow the starter to spin it. So we're pouring a plethora of different chemicals into the pistons uh, in hopes that it's basically going to free up those uh, 
those piston rings. A uh, little bit of WD-40, PB Blaster, some ATF, some Hot Shot Secret, basically just a bunch of lube to get in there and hopefully break that apart and just let it soak overnight or for a little while and then see what happens. Normally when this happens, you get to the front main pulley and you put a big breaker bar on it and you just kind of rotate it manually, but the radiator's in the way, so there's not a good way to do that right now. So step one is get a bunch of lube in there, let it kind of penetrate into the metal, and then uh, we'll probably try this again in the morning. on this thing. What are you listening to? Uh, I don't know what this thing is, but it is uh, annoying. How do I turn the volume down? This, this is, you, don't, you don't listen to this on the daily? Uh, how do I go down? Is that down? There we go. Listen, just a few little tiny, tiny stakes, you know? Just enough to keep the boys motivated <laughs> as we go into the night. Well, my friends, day one is in the books. We got here super late, like 3.30, by about 4 o'clock by the time we started doing any work. Got the dozer running, she runs sweet. Um, the second excavator, the 235, no luck yet. The motor's locked up. We're hoping that uh, the lubricant that we put in the pistons will kind of free her up and it'll start tomorrow. If not, then we're gonna have to break that one down. So we are uh, setting up camp, having some wonderful dinner, testing out the new Starlink uh, internet system, which I'm pretty excited about. And uh, we're gonna camp here and wake up and get after it. So well, it's uh, uh, Starlink's working. We'll all be up on the internet doing Instagram doing movies. But uh, yeah, we've got uh, we're using the old camp here. Apparently, back in the day, there was like 60 dudes that stayed here. So this was quite the quite the camp, and the little buildings trickled all throughout the weeds. And uh, it's gonna be a good night, right, Jimbo? It's gonna be a great night. You got good stories? I got lots of good stories lined up. Can't you got wait. your harmonica? Uh, oh. <sighs> Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, this is gonna be a multi-part series because as you saw, we didn't really get anything done in this first video other than getting the dozer running. But I do have a teaser for the next video and it's right. No, don't show them, don't show them, don't show them. I'm not gonna show you yet, don't wanna give it away. But listen guys, this is gonna be awesome. I think you're gonna enjoy it. And uh, like I said, project is still happening. We still have not finished, so anything could happen and uh, it's actually a lot crazier than I was anticipating. So hope you guys enjoy, buckle up and stay tuned for the next video coming in a couple days.